Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we would be learning about the SOX Act, which basically stands for the Sarbanes and Oxley Act. Now, this video is a part of Business Ethics and Corporate Governance module. In this playlist, I have already uploaded many other videos, so I request you to watch all other videos in this particular module so that you get a better understanding. You can find the playlist link in the description box. And for this one, we would be discussing about the meaning, criticism and key provisions which I have mentioned over here. So without wasting much time, let's start with the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and do hit the like button if you like this video. So let's start. Okay, so starting with the meaning of Sarbanes Oxley Act, this was enforced in 2002 by Securities and Exchange Commission. Now let me explain in detail about Securities and Exchange Commission. This was created by US Congress which works with the motive to protect investors, maintain a fair and efficient capital market and facilitate capital formation. So that was the basic motive of SEC which we talk about and Sarbanes Oxley Act was enforced by SEC in the year 2002. Now that was mainly for the purpose to mandate strict reforms. So strict reforms were required and to impose criminal penalties. Now this was at the time when there was the very high profile, highly reputed companies were doing major scams and frauds which were shaking the, uh, shaking the Shaking, shaking the belief of the investors in those companies. So there was a lot of fear and the investors were not able to invest their money in capital market because of those frauds and scams happening and that was the basic motive why the reform was required and thus SOX Act was a creative initiative to resolve all the issues related. Now as I have mentioned over here it was to establish improved auditing financial re regulations, better business practices at the publicly traded companies. So this was majorly focused upon listed companies in the stock market where people invest their money and these companies raise those money and then use it for the business expansion. So this was basically concerned with the uh, promoting the interest of shareholders if we say that in simple language. Now this was named after Senator Paul Sarbanes and Representative Michael Oxley in US government. If you don't know what does a senator means, it is a person who works in US government. So both were related to US government and this act because it was formed by them, it was initiated by them, it was named after them, them only. Now this act was enforced to protect shareholders, employees and public from fraudulent financial practices and errors in accounting audit. So the main areas we will be we will be looking after in the next slide that what was the major focus areas. But yeah, in this whole act, new rules for accountants, new rules for auditors and the corporate officers were created. So corporate officers, they were made more responsible, more accountable for whatever ha happens in their business. It also became a mandate to disclose to the public what is the financial and the operational position of the business and to keep external auditors to review the statements and the business position of the company. So all these rules were created and it was implemented to make the reforms more strict even if it was costlier than previous practices, it was required to maintain the to maintain the efficiency in the market and to keep up the trust of investors who were investing their money in these publicly listed companies. So the act was spurred by major accounting scandals as, as I already mentioned that at that time in the year 2002 there were major accounting scandals happening and that too with highly reputed high profile companies like Enron and Worldcom so that shook investors confidence in capital market and thus it became a requirement to mandate the Sarbanes Oxley Act which came with a lot of reforms also criminal penalties for doing frauds and scams and thus it was totally focused upon better business practices and better trading practices in capital market. 
CEOs, auditors, corporate officers, accountants, as I already mentioned, were all made responsible and more accountable with a new set of rules. So when we will be discussing about different sections, which are the key provisions of SOX Act, we will come to know how it was different and what all reforms were included. So let's move on to major focus areas. So you need to remember this. These were the major focus areas in SOX Act. So first is new audit rules were implemented in which external auditors were also included. Enhanced corporate responsibility. So we read how corporate officers, the auditors, the accountants and the management professionals all were made accountable and responsible for business position and whatever uh, if any fraud or scams happen within the business. Protection to shareholders was, was again the main objective because they are making investment in the capital market. It's their money which is being used by the businesses. So the protection given to shareholders and not the market and to control the market from being manipulated by, an, by any fraud or scam. So that was man, again a mandate in this uh, SOX Act. Criminal punishment was also in, included because that would create a sense of fear so that anyone won't repeat any negligence in terms of rules and regulations. So these were the major focus areas by which the SOX Act came into existence. Now let's, let's talk about the Section 302 which is SOX C provision. So Section 302 talks about corporate responsibility for financial reports. Now here financial reports were introduced and this became important to provide quarterly and annual reports, even the monthly reports. But the annual reports was main in focus because this was published by public companies which described their financial and operational position in simpler language through graphics, photos and narratives. So right now also if you search about any publicly listed companies, you can get their annual report in which you can find different components like general information of company, letter to shareholders, management analysis, financial statements in terms of income statement, balance sheet, auditor's report, etc. And all these are written in simple plain English so that it can be easily understandable by the investors, by the government, by anyone who is having some kind of interest in the company. So I'm talking about the stakeholders. So this was became, this was again mandatory to publish these financial reports which gives an overview, a uh, total idea about the management position, the financial position, the general position of the company, the business performance over the years and the future prospective. So this was again to maintain that transparency so that if investors are making investment in, in any publicly traded company, they are well aware about the company's performance. Again, CEO and CFO were made directly responsible for maintaining the accuracy. So there uh, should not be any negligence or any, any negligence by these officers. So it was required that they maintain the accuracy, proper documentation, they review and then, and then finally submit those financial reports. So filing of periodic reports, which I talked about, it could be monthly, quarterly, as well as annual report and the financial disclosures were made mandatory. So this was under section 302 which talks about corporate responsibility for financial reports. Now next is section 404. Again this one is also one of the key provision introduced in SOX Act. It deals with management assessment of internal control. Okay, so internal control is like management should assure the organization's efficiency reliable financial reporting along with compliance with rules, regulations, all the legal procedures. So this was that management should assess their internal controls in all these areas. They should be responsible for the whole structure and if any violation is found by SEC that is Securities and Exchange Commission, the management becomes directly responsible and actions can be taken accordingly. So as we read that criminal penalties were also introduced, so there are several kind of penalties which was included in SOX Act. So if the accountability and the responsibility the management does not understand and any negligence is found, SEC is totally open to take actions. 
so this was also introduced under section 404 and thus this was all about management assessment of their internal controls now next one is section 409 which talks about real time issuer disclosures now this also becomes uh, important because many a times what happens if there is any drastic change in financial or operational position of the business and that is not disclosed to the public or that is not disclosed publicly so it create a little bit of uh, it does not become transparent because people are not aware about what company is going through if there is any drastic change and thus it is like a kind of negligence by the part of management so this was required that the company should disclose to the public on real time basis now this is what you should note it was to require it was required to be disclosed publicly in an urgent basis in a real time basis any drastic change which can be uh, which can be acquisition which can be divestment it could be any major personnel just departure these are some of the examples so that should be mentioned that should be disclosed and that too in simpler english language now come to section 802 which is about criminal penalties for altering documents so we talked about how this act also introduced criminal penalties which was required to create a sense of fear and so that any kind of manipulation falsification any kind of fraud or scam does not take place so this section imposes penalties and imprisonment of up to 20 years for altering destroying concealing or anything that is manipulating with the document now it also imposes penalties of up to 10 years on any accountant auditor or anyone if uh, that willfully violates the requirement and maintenance of all audit or review papers so whatever the papers whatever the documents are being presented publicly whatever the documents are being uh, held with the company that should be audited well that should be maintained well if there is any willful violation if that is by mistake it can be corrected but if that is any willful violation it could be action could be taken by sec and thus it becomes uh, and thus it makes management responsible for all these kind of penalties now let's come to section 806 again this is one of the key provision of SOX act it encourages the disclosure of corporate fraud by protecting employees of publicly traded companies or their subsidiaries who report illegal activities so many a time what happens that inside the company illegal activities are going on and employees are not able to report because they are having fear that there could be dismissal there could be discri uh, discrimination being faced by them by the seniors so they do not report usually about all these illegal activities now this section makes it more easier for whistleblower whistleblower in simpler terms is any person in the company who opens up complaints or report about any concealed mis misconduct any illegal activity happening something unethical going on inside the organization so it could be employee it could be anyone related to the organization um, who are also known as internal whistleblowers so if those person come up it's more likely that the seniors the management would try to cover cover them up would try to fear them up and thus there are many problems like they face uh, of dismissal which i mentioned any if they are reporting any fraud of the company any illegal activity happening in the company so this section tries to encourage the disclosure they try to protect those kind of employees who go who publicly report about any illegal activities happening in any listed company any public company now laws are enacted to protect these whistleblowers from retaliation by the concerned parties those are generally in power so as i already mentioned this was again a requirement and a key provision which was included in section 806 that was to protect those persons who try to disclose any internal illegal unethical operation happening inside the organization and thus it also becomes uh, important because these smaller activities these smaller misconduct at uh, initial level they became uh, they become uh, a bigger fraud a bigger scam which disturbs the whole market and thus it leads to the stock market crash where people lo loses a lot of their hard-earned money 
so all these things were kept in mind and these three provisions were included in SOX Act which was introduced by Securities and Exchange Commission. So this becomes very important to regulate the capital market in a good manner and to protect the investors uh, interest and also to make the management more responsible as well as to create penalties and punishment in case of any criminal, any illegal, any unethical activities. Now let's talk about the criticism faced by SOX Act. Again, this was a very good step, a uh, very good initiative taken by the US government. But uh, every time there is criticism, if something new is introduced, so right uh, in the time at the time when it was uh, introduced in the year 2002, it was implemented. There was criticism like the law would hinder competition and business growth because it was having a lengthy processor, it was costly, it was time taking. So everyone, uh, those who were doing fair business, they complained that because of some companies like Enron and WorldCom who have not uh, followed legal procedures, who, who have done frauds and scams, why everyone has to deal with these overly burdensome, uh, but overly burdensome regulations to be followed. These were the mistakes of few companies and others are doing well in their business. So why this kind of... Uh, why this kind of extra regulations being laid out to them for no for no reason so this was again a criticism by them however if if something is being implemented everyone should follow to make uh, and it could it could not be that few companies who are doing such scams uh, should go through these regulations because you never know if a company is good at this time at the later stage you may found that the company was involved in any kind of illegal or unethical activities so that was again not a right to criticism but again people were talking about it and yeah it was costly time taking lengthy procedure but soon it was regulated it was required and people get habitual the corporates get habitual of all these the auditors were kept the accountants were involved more uh, management became more responsible so all those were necessary it did not hindered any competition or business growth so so again these criticisms failed and it was successfully implemented and uh, and this was uh, all about SOX Act. So thank you for watching I hope you like this video and please watch other videos in this playlist subscribe to the channel thank you.